All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Joe with Colab Garage. A lot of things have changed for us over the past several months. Uh, we're filming this in our new shop, which is on the other side of Atlanta. We've had uh, a lot of growth since uh, a year ago, and uh, we had an opportunity to move into a larger space, so we took it. And during that time, we've been developing a product called Colab Carbon. Uh, it's a 3D printed carbon fiber composite material that actually has continuous strands of carbon fiber embedded into the products. This is just a few examples of it, but uh, the purpose of this video is to show you guys how tough this material is. It's not like your uh, hobbyist 3D printer material. It's not built on a hobbyist machine either. And uh, several months ago, when we were in our old location, we had started to film some torture test videos. So you can see exactly what this stuff can hold up to. So we're gonna cut back to that older footage, and then I'll bring you guys back to wrap up, because some of this stuff was a very long-term test to show what this stuff would do in uh, extended amounts of time and different types of chemicals. So we'll cut to that footage, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so some of the things we're gonna do with our 3D prints is torture test them. So we can prove to you guys that this is, you know, suitable technology to be using on a vehicle, a street car that's uh, uh, tuned up or a race car. So we printed off a bunch of these little discs, just a little collab logo disc that's, uh, I don't know, 16th of an inch thick and uh, put a little logo on it and uh, we're gonna torture test these things and see how long they can hold up to certain things. So first test, we've put one of these discs in our toaster oven and we've had it in here for over an hour at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the rated temperature limit for this carbon fiber material. Now, when we printed this, we did it with minimal inlay and no continuous fiber. So we kind of gave it the worst case scenario uh, to be able to hold up. So let's take a look and see. We have the toaster here at 300 degrees. I have the part is sitting at you know 280, 300 degrees. And I'm just I'm obviously can't touch that, but I've got some uh, you know I'm squeezing that. You look at my hand. I'm and it's not deforming it at all. So we might turn it up just a little bit more to see. I mean, obviously at some point it's going to melt because you have to melt it to make the part. So, but we feel like at 300 degrees, if you're mounting your sensors, your wiring or anything next to those, that hot of a heat source, that's probably not a good idea. So, and that's where we're gonna be using parts like this. So uh, next test, we're gonna stick this stuff in some, some fluids, brake cleaner, methanol, oil, and see how well it holds up to that. So then you know when you buy a part from us, you can buy it with confidence, you know that this, you know, it's not gonna fall apart because it's submerged in some type of fluid, or if you spray some brake clean on it, it's gonna melt, you know, stuff like that. All right, so we showed you the heat test in the toaster oven, and you know, you're never gonna get it that hot, let's put it that way. Uh, we warmed it up a little bit more and we were able to put little indentations in it. So um, I, I feel pretty good about continuous 300 degrees. We could, um, we're gonna, it's still in there at 300. We're gonna leave it in there for several more hours and just see what happens. So next, let's give it some fluid torture tests. First thing we're gonna try here is brake cleaner. Anybody who's cleaning up around their engine bay, got oil spills everywhere, you know, we're curious how it would hold up to this. It's pretty corrosive. Brake cleaner ruins a lot of things. Powder coat, if you're not careful, uh, paint. I mean, there's a lot of things you don't wanna get your brake cleaner on. So this is one of our prototype sensor mounts. Uh, it's a little bit undersized, so we're gonna sacrifice this thing into a uh, beaker full of brake cleaner and just see what happens to it. So let's, uh, let's try it out. Okay. That's probably enough to, to prove our point. So I'm gonna dunk that sucker in the brake clean and we'll come back here. We'll check on it every five minutes and we'll start the video back up rough time as to when we uh, start to see it 
degrade if it degrades at all. Okay, so we're back. It's been, I started this timer like a minute or so late. So it's been roughly 15 minutes. We added a little bit more brake clean so this thing would just be submerged in it. So let's have, uh, I've been checking it every five minutes or so, but you can see picking up in the mic, it's still the little ribs that are in this are uh, still there. So it's basically untouched by brake cleaner. And if you're, if you're submerging your stuff in brake cleaner for 15 minutes, uh, you, you probably shouldn't be doing that anyway. So that I think that's a worst case scenario. Let's move on to the next fluid. All right, so uh, brake clean test, pass with flying colors as far as I'm concerned. I mean, yeah, we could leave it in there for hours, but I don't, I don't really see the point in doing that because that's not a real thing. You're never gonna submerge something in brake clean for that long in your engine bay or whatever. So next test, this is gonna be much more practical, but it's gonna take us a lot longer. So this is just some pump E85, and you know, normally here in Atlanta, we get anywhere between 75 and 83. So we'll just call this E80. Um, it's been sitting out for a little bit, so it's not really fuel I would put in a car, but it will definitely uh, suffice for this test. So we're gonna take that same part that we subjected to the brake clean, and we're just gonna put it in this beaker, fill it up with E85, and we'll check on it every once in a while, but really the test for this is, is can this stay submerged in fuel for extended periods of time, like, you know, months. Uh, we've, we've done tests for fuel systems where the rubber hose says it's rated for ethanol, but you come back months later and the hose is starting to deteriorate in that fuel. So I don't know if we're gonna run that test for that long, but if we ever wanna start making fuel hats and fuel pump hangers and things like that, where you're actually submerging this stuff in fuel, That'd be great to know. So we're gonna do a little test for a shorter period of time and just see how this holds up. So let's, uh, we'll pour it in here and we'll see what happens to it. All right, so we'll check on this here a few times today just to see if it's if it starts falling apart right away. You know, we'll obviously stop the test early, but uh, and then we'll check on it every couple days and uh, see what happens to it. So uh, let's go on to the next test. Okay, so uh, I feel like this is probably the worst case scenario for for this stuff. So this is acetone. Um, this is one of the little. Features. So when we do the inlaid continuous carbon, the machine goes off to the side and does a check of this. So it's you know very sparse fill, and it's gonna let the acetone pretty much bathe it from the inside out. So this will be a, I think this is the ultimate torture test. Uh, my thought here is it, it's probably gonna eat it up because one of the things you can do is use that acetone vapor to get a better surface finish on uh, this material. So. I have a feeling that it's eventually gonna melt it, but let's find out. I think, uh, I don't think anyone's gonna be doing this, but let's see what this material can do. So, so we don't have to waste a bunch of it. I'm just gonna set it in here and uh, let's get the timer going. All right, so it's been sitting in there just for a little bit. I'll come back here and we'll check on it in like five minutes, see what happens to it. And then uh, we'll probably stop the test at like 15 with same with the brake clean and just see what happens to it. All right, we're back. It's been 16 and a half minutes. Let's, uh, I've kind of been keeping my eye on it here, but honestly, I'm, it didn't do anything to it. I mean, I, it didn't melt any of the layers and smooth it. So I guess this vapor home process must be uh, done at higher temperature. Actually, I'm pretty sure it is done at a elevated temperature, but just to have acetone submerged in it, it didn't touch it. I'm really impressed. I know if you put plastic in there, PLA, Lexan, like all that, those types of plastics, uh, if you submerge it in acetone, it'll melt it. So super impressed with that. Uh, let's go on to the next torture test. All right. So 
Next, oil. So uh, we use, in most of our builds, Brad Penn on the GTRs. We use like a Motul 8100 on, uh, on the R8 and Huracan. And you know, those are probably gonna be the most common oils, but this is a semi-synthetic blend. It's got a ton of zinc in it. Um, so we're just gonna take this same part that we uh, submerged in the acetone for 15 minutes. I didn't even blow this off. I'm basically giving this the worst possible chance of surviving these tests, and it's still malleable. The reason I like this particular part is it's very thin. It's like two layers, and it's basically like a honeycomb in there. So it's exposed from the inside out. So we're just gonna do this on a small scale and set this down in this cap full of oil so we don't have to waste a bunch of oil. And I'm just gonna set it down in there like that. Based off of our other tests, I'm not really expecting anything to happen to this, but I think this is gonna be like the, uh, the ethanol test that we're doing over here. This has been now sitting in here for, I don't know, about an hour, and it, it isn't touching it, but that's, that would go the same for like the fuel lines and stuff I mentioned before. It takes you know several weeks to show if uh, it's gonna start eating away at the part. So we're gonna set these off to the side and come back in a couple weeks. So the video is gonna take a little longer for us to produce this time just because we have this test going on. And we'll let you guys know. I mean, I, I probably won't run this for months on end, but uh, we'll leave this stuff in there. Maybe we'll do a little update. So next time you see us, it'll be several weeks from now. And uh, we'll wrap this video up with seeing how uh, these few parts survive uh, ethanol and oil. All right, we're back. And at the end of that last clip, you saw me putting some of the material in some Brad Penn oil that we use. And as you can see there, it's, it's about six months later and there's the dead flies to prove it. And um, it's been sitting submerged in this since August. And uh, the date we're filming this is March 13th, the following year. So it's been about six months or a little bit longer. And this material has not deformed or started to come apart at all. And this, like I said in the other video, this is one of the offshoots that the printer prints. So it basically is going to give you full immersion in the oil for this product. And it's uh, pretty much untouched. So the last long-term test that we did was in some ethanol fuel. So let me uh, clean my hands off real quick and we'll cut to uh, seeing what this thing did in the ethanol. All right, so here's the ethanol solution that we had put our old prototype sensor mount in that uh, has been sitting in here. Now I've had to actually fill this up two different times because the bag isn't perfectly sealed and the ethanol would eventually evaporate. So this has been in here for six months. Let's see what, if anything, it did to the part. All right, my favorite smell. The, um, yeah, and I'm scratching it with my nail here. It's not, hasn't deformed it at all. So I think that, you know, like I said in the other video, there's some fuel hose that's rated to be submerged in fuel, in ethanol, methanol-based fuels, and it turns out that it's not. I mean, we didn't do this in a methanol test. And you know, we haven't developed the product to the point where we think we can uh, make fuel pump hangers or anything like that, but we wanted to put that in this solution for that long so it was not just a you know five-minute test or a two or three-day test. So this has been over six months submerged in ethanol, and it didn't affect the product whatsoever. All right, so just wrapping things up with uh, the torture test for the products. And I just wanted to show a couple examples of some of the products that we've been making. So we've got some single sensor mount holders and a dual. These are on our rail system, so it's expandable and it's all different kinds of things we've made these for. Made it for uh, uh, MAC valves, fuel, uh, flex fuel sensors, uh, fuel pressure regulators, uh, Lambda sensor controllers, you name it. 
So that, that system is, and that's an ever expanding line uh, we've been developing over the past six months. We've also, as a result of our oil test, we've been able to develop a pretty cool oil cap that is full uh, reinforced carbon fiber. And it also has an indexable uh, center cap that has our logo on it. But uh, if you want to do a custom version with your logo, that's something we could definitely do. Um, there's you know, some of the other examples, a tube mount for a, a sensor clamp, a, a GTR specific mount that would go on the front engine cover. And then uh, in our R8 parachute kits, we've been using these in, uh, for the parachute release handle. And this is actually designed to be a two-part piece, so you can leave that in the car and tuck this away. So a lot of innovative things you can do, and we've been proving it through racing. We've been racing it with the Colab Garage white GTR at several drag racing events and kind of putting it through its paces. And then moving forward, we're gonna be racing with Formula Drift and Ryan Literal in the uh, 2023 season. And there's gonna be a ton of Colab carbon parts on that car to further prove the, the worthiness of this type of a product being on a, a vehicle in a racing condition. So with that, I hope to see you guys out at the track. Check out our website and we'll see you on the next video.